Today we're looking at a new truss analysis tool, which will give you a result live in the model that you're using quickly. And you can set various parameters and get your results, structural calculation results that you need. And you can also quickly create a PDF of that result, which you can download and put into your calculation set. Okay, I'm going to select this new tool from our toolbar. Looks like that, Trust Analysis. And I'll just put it into the graph. So it's got a couple of inputs. But really, it starts with some defaults. So I'm just going to grab some lines. I'm going to put a curve component in. And then grab this bunch of lines here, which is a Fink roof truss. And add it into the component. Okay, it's got its results here. So the best way to see them is put the curves and mesh the outputs. And anytime you see LT and S, usually in Grasshopper, it's the tag component. And this one's the 3D tag. You can see LTS there. And C is just the color if you want to change the color. And J is the justification. So if I just connect LT and S, it's got the correct format. So as you can see, it pops up basically a calculation box, and this can be made into a sheet. Um, so again, if I select another one, another truss, you can see it's got that different configuration. So if I go back to this original Fink truss, and it it just offsets it slightly, um, just so you can see it. So if you're using this in a live model, you could have the building all modeled, and it will just pop it up to the side so you can do have a look at the results. So it doesn't get in the way of the model. And basically it's splitting, it's giving you uh, the ID which you can set. You can set a top and bottom chord load so that will be a load applied to the top chord or the bottom chord or both and at different values depending on what you want to do. It gives you a deflection, a maximum deflection and the location of that deflection and it gives you a span over ratio which is pretty important for most structural engineers. Uh, usually your criteria is a combination of both of these. So a maximum amount of physical deflection, but also a maximum span over limit. Then obviously you've got a representation of the truss with dimensions and color coding, whether it's in tension or compression. And also the precise values of tension and compression are listed here with obviously each section is numbered and the axial load and negative is compression. So you can see 15 there you would expect that to be in tension and it is it's positive and 13 you would expect that to be in compression and it is that's in compression. And then finally, it gives you a reaction at the, each end uh, in vertical terms. 
You might have noticed with this upper fink roof truss here that members don't connect at nodes. And we may, we've made the decision with this tool to rationalize that so that all cords do meet at nodes. And that's to help the engineer because normally you would do an analysis based on that assumption. Um, you might have a little bit of moment developed across that bridge there, but it's not something that's usually critical. Um, unless it's uh, really thin sections and that section capacity can't deal with that. So with this just allows you to have some pretty rubbishy line work, potentially, something from an architect where it doesn't line up and just select it and it just does all the hard work of making everything join to nodes and gives you the results out really quickly. So that was the design goal for this tool. So far, you haven't actually seen this deflect much, and that's because the loads are pretty small. But this is actually a deflection plot. So if I bump this up to something a lot higher, yeah, you can see that actual deflected shape there. Obviously, you always got the raw results there anyway. And the last, I suppose I'll do this how trust for completeness. But we're also showing this Viren deal. Now, it says here that it's tension compression only. So moment isn't taken account, accounted for. Um, so, as we all know, Veer and Deal needs moment to act as a truss or girder. So we'll just see out of interest what happens <clears throat> in this scenario. As you can see, it's just completely collapsed. So you know that this truss is not working, even if I bring the load down. It won't work in tension and compression only. Those are huge deflections. So um, as we all know, the viewer deal needs moment to work and it's not working properly here. And lastly, as we said, we want this to be quick for the engineer to get quick results. And another helpful part of that is to get quick PDFs. So you can actually get this sheet and create a PDF easily. We've got this PDF tool here, get PDF. And if I put this calc ID in here, it will generate a PDF for you, which you just download. And there it is. So if I do that again for something else, say I make it this thing here. There's my results and there's my PDF. And you can just put that in your structural calculation package and it's ready to go. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.